This week on Brum Eats World. You and I both grew up in the South. We grew up being one of very few Black people in our environment. And I was never made to feel like I was allowed to enjoy country. Like I wasn't welcome in these spaces. But then I listened to this album and it reminded me, my family has been in this country for generations. We have worked the tobacco field. We have worked the coal mines. We were actual cowboys. Like to know that my family has such history with what gets to be defined as country in this very country, and then also be told that we don't get to claim any of it. I love that Beyonce was like, no, babes, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we coming for what's ours. When the spawn meets world. What up, bros? What up, bros? And welcome to Bro Meets World. When the spawn meets world. Your cowboy Carter fan cast. <laughs> I'm your buckaroo siege. And I'm Cowboy Tony. Cowboy Tony! <laughs> you guys, this is our extra credit episode where we Y'all are gonna covering... get sick of us real fast. I'm just gonna I mean, throw honestly, I'm like I, I'll say this. We are covering Beyonce's latest album, Cowboy Carter, and I have not had a moment where my brain has not been playing one of these songs in the background. If you Ooh. have ADHD, you are very familiar that like your mind will get a song and it's just like in there. My sure. mind has an album. I wake up every morning with a different song <laughs> playing in my head and I'm happy about it. I'm, um, you know, I got to say, I only have gotten the chance to listen to the album a few times. I've been traveling this last week, so I've been kind of out and about. But from what I, again, I've probably listened to it maybe two or three times. I have favorites, I have takes, and I can't wait to jump into it. Absolutely. All right. So just to, gotta, to give you guys a little bit of breakdown of how this is going to go, we are going to talk about the album. We are going to list our top five favorites each um we'll have some honorable mentions and then we will wrap it up again this is extra credit episode um so it won't be as long as our regular episodes but we had to talk about it. we had to talk about beyonce you have to otherwise it would have been <laughs> us trying to sandwich this conversation into a regular episode and it would have taken over that episode <laughs> absolutely you guys know how we get when we are passionate about things and if you wanted a boy meets world episode this week you should have had them on the set Listen to the Cowboy Carter, because <laughs> that's all we could talk about. I think we had one episode a few years ago where it was like, hey, we're not going to talk about this episode at all. We're just going to talk about Black Panther, which, yeah. which had just came out. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is probably a better way to, to go about it. Absolutely. Okay, before we dive in, uh, we want to give a shout out to all of our listeners who have been sending us emails and recordings. We love hearing from you. Um, if you want to share your thoughts on the show, on any of our extra credits, any of our things, hit us up at brummiesworld at gmail.com or hit us up on all of our platforms at Brummies World. Um, you can go to our YouTube. You can subscribe to our Patreon. You guys, you have figured out the ways to keep talking to us. So I have faith in you. But um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you while we talk about Cowboy Carter. Uh, where should we? Where should, where should we, we start? 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 Where should we start? Okay, first of all, you got to start from the beginning. Let's just talk about the album for a little bit, which is to say, like, how did you feel when you heard it? Because I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I asked you. I'm gonna talk a little bit. I went and I canceled all plans for Friday. Oh, <laughs> I. Uh, Sent my husband away. I prepared. I had an edible. I had some uh, <laughs> drinks. And I went when it hit midnight East Coast time, which was 9 p.m. our time. I went into my room, sat by myself, opened up my Spotify, and just listened to it. Unbothered. I turned off my phone. I was like, I'm going to be so, I'm going to be so uh tempted to be on my phone and see what everyone else is saying and i was like but no i want to experience this album the way beyonce wants me to experience this album which is from start to finish no interruptions no outside opinions just vibes and i gotta say I, like every five seconds i would just be like this 
bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony, how did you feel? How did you respond to? Okay, Coming so Down? I heard the album um, while um, driving to a waterfall in Oregon that was like a two-hour drive. So I was like driving through the countryside of Oregon, just listening ah. to the album through. Perfect place just to be in Perfect. the country while listening to it. Um, and honestly, it was just a range of emotions. Like it was, you know, obviously I don't, I think it took, I mean, I've listened to it, like I said, like two or three times. I think it's probably going to take like five more times for me to really appreciate and understand everything. But just those first impressions of being like, oh, wait, we're doing this now. Oh, wait, we're doing this now. She got who? Post Malone. Oh like, my! Oh my God! Post Malone. <laughs> like, we'll get into it, but like I like the the collabs on this and the features on this is so amazing. And then uh, as of this recording, they just released the credits. Uh, so the people who behind the scenes are on this album, it is like Beyonce is just on a whole other level. But continue, keep telling your story. Um. Yeah. So I. I... Like I said, it was just kind of an array of emotions. Obviously, there were a few songs that stuck out to me the first time, and then some others the second and third time that really kind of popped out as being interesting. I mean, the whole album is really incredible. Um, you know, it's, I, I remember us having a conversation when I think Texas Hold'em first came out, like, or she dropped the first few singles. And we were like, oh, like, it would be really great for her to show a spotlight to some other black country artists and boy did she yeah boy did she show up for that boy howdy <laughs> and just like i love just you know the the praise and attention that you know other artists are getting but also just the conversation that she's sparking like is this a country album everybody has so many opinions on like her being in the country and all of that and i just think that this album was the whole point it was breaking the barrier and the one thing i was kind of comparing it to in my head was um and I, I think i've talked about this on the podcast that uh michael jackson when he did his um off the wall album what my favorite Michael Jackson album, but it's a disco album, right? And then um, it, it, the problem Michael Jackson was having at the time that album came out was that he couldn't get his videos played on MTV because they said it was rock music. So they were like, hey, this is a rock music station. And so this motherfucker, if you listen to Thriller, there's guitar. There's like, you think about something like Beat It, like he really decided like, oh, I'm going to break through the genres to eliminate this barrier. And I think that Beyonce, this specific Beyonce album has done that in the best way I've seen in my lifetime. Absolutely. I think the thing about this album that is amazing is Beyonce really did kind of, A, she announced that this wasn't a country album, this was a Beyonce album, and then when you listen to it, you're like, oh, this bitch created a genre of her own. Yeah. She's like, I make Beyonce music. That's what I make. Um, And that well, it, transcends it, genres. Like, there's a whole yeah. thing talking about how it transcends, transcends genres, but I think that it's amazing because you really did. I listened to this album and I'm like, nobody, nobody. I'm sorry. I don't know who like your faves are. I have nothing against your faves. I have plenty of other artists who I really appreciate. Nobody is in the music industry the way Beyonce is. Nobody is taking these chances the way Beyonce is. I've listened to a lot of like new releases lately and everyone has like, <laughs> Like, they release something, and you're like, oh, that sounds like them. That sounds cool. I like it. Yeah. But Beyonce is, like, trying new things constantly. Yeah. And I just find it, like, amazing. So, yeah, keep going. I, I was just going to say, you know, there's, like you said, there's been a lot of people coming out with albums. I think about, like, Justin Timberlake and J-Lo and how their albums are, like, flopping hard. And I think part of the reason is that Beyonce isn't just releasing music. Like, she's trying to create art, and she's also doing, like the work like she's she's yes. doing the history lessons she's yes. trying to incorporate genres and melodies and like all of these like homages to not just country music but just black music american music i think this album falls under the title of americana in terms of genre in terms of just I love being that you a said that. soundtrack of america and yes it has a folksy country uh you know heart at the center of it but there's just of all the genres that in, in, you know you can find throughout america i feel like this album does a great job of reflecting all of them i love that you said that i don't know where you got it from but i was listening to uh another podcast and kendra james 
said on it she said that she identified this as americana as well and i was like mm. that's what this is it it um pulls together all of the elements of america and the symbolism of america and the packaging of america i think people forget that america is an export mm -hmm. and it has been since its foundation and america um has iconography and sounds and all of these things most of which were built on the backs of black and brown people yeah and yet they are given a white face they are packaged and sold to the masses and beyonce said we're not doing that anymore she yeah. literally opens up the album with american requiem and in that song um for those of you who don't know a requiem is like a funeral song meaning that like this is the end and she's like yeah all of these things that we we told ourselves about america all of these ideologies of america all of those things we're done with we are yeah. moving forward is the the wind of change is coming and i appreciated her so much because not only um someone had pointed out on the cover of uh cowboy carter the horse is going in one direction and beyonce is face the other and someone said that that is to symbolize this idea that in order to move forward we have to look to our past we have mm. to look at what we have done and where we have come from in order to move forward and there that theme is played consistently throughout this album and i just like there's so much symbolism we can't I, possibly get to everything but I'm i so i also think that like the way you know she's been using the flag imagery and the american uh because she she references it throughout the songs as well not just in the, the photo shoots or whatever that's been coming out is almost kind of reflective to how us as, as americans are kind of uh, we've kind of rebelled against this kind of overly patriotic um, propaganda that we've been force fed throughout. And she is rebranding the flag. She's taking ownership of the flag and making it black and making mm -hmm. it like a, a native influence and like respect to like those who are true Americans in a way that doesn't reflect the old white men that sit in Washington. Like, I just think that it's a very um, timely um, album to come out right now, even though, you know, as it's been said this album was supposed to come out before renaissance this was yeah. uh you know she wanted this album to come out before renaissance but the pandemic happened and she was like you know what they deserve to dance let me put this dance album out first yeah. um but i actually think the timing of it worked out really well just because i think like i said it's kind of reflective to this rebellion that i've seen stood up throughout the country absolutely and like everything that you said is totally accurate in sense of I think about the the uses of the usage of the flag, and on the cover, a lot of people are like, "But how dare she like promote the flag?" And it's like that's not the full flag for two reasons. One, it doesn't show the blue and the stars, because as a lot of people have pointed out, we're not united at this point in time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it does show the stripes, uh, the red and white stripes, which were always a way of showing the blood and bone that built this country and also by removing the stars from it it also transcends time because those of you who know the one thing that has been consistent has been those red and white stripes but the stars the number of stars the formation of the stars those have always changed throughout time so by again just using the flag in this way she is symbolizing that this is supposed to transcend time and space and this album does that so well one of the things that i love especially about the third half of the album is that beyonce is blending all of these genres all as you said the americana of it all all of these different american sounds and sprinkling little bits it's a melting of pot out. it's it is a melting pot <laughs> of an album and it's so beautiful to listen to a lot of the songs will start off one way and change halfway yep. through. And like, it's amazing. You said that this was supposed to come before Renaissance. And to me, the first time I heard it, I was like, I can tell. It sounds like, to me, the evolution of Lemonade. And I yeah. can really hear the Lemonade influences. And my husband was talking about, he made a playlist of like where he thought songs should fit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like Jolene is like a great reference, like to to Lemonade, and, and yeah. that, like I mean, 
uh, what's it? Dolly Parton says, what was it? Your Becky with the good hair was blonde. Yeah. Mine was Auburn or something like that. Like it exactly. feels like a, a progression, but also like in terms of taking the past to the present, it would make sense to kind of start with the folk and kind of lead into the disco after. Um, I just want to comment a little bit on what you said about how it like is a melting pot with time as well, because there's so many references that not are only, um, you know, country, but really go back to like, what, the beginnings of popular music with the yeah. 1930s and, you know, some of the first, I, I you know, uh, artists like, you know, Willie Nelson and Dolly Parton who were making music um, in the 60s. And so like, we have this time span that's all being uh, combined into one album, but also, like I said, having new artists, having artists who are just making it on the scene now and having them on the same album as someone like Dolly Parton. It's just really interesting to see the influences that are, are from all over the place in this album. I mean, she covered the Beatles song. It, it's, yeah. it's so interesting, the choices that were made. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, first of all, what are you doing? Like, go listen to the album. But also... <laughs> the like to me the album itself is kind of broken up into threes tracks one through uh i'll say one through five uh which is american requiem blackbird 16 carriages protector and my rose are all old style country it's the way that yeah. they used to do country and as you said with american requiem we kind of open up with this buffalo springsfield sound and i immediately caught that and i was like oh my this is what she's doing and then we get blackbird which a lot of people have talked about her reclaiming blackbird and adding other people so you have beyonce tanner adele who we had just talked about mm -hmm. with bunny britney spencer tiara kennedy and reina roberts all of them you get 16 carriages which to me in context hits so differently sure protector which literally makes my husband cry every time he loves protector from um, the first time i heard it yeah and we feature Rumi. someone said Rumi was like if you think i'm the only bitch up in this house without a grammy you're wrong <laughs> i'm coming for it and my rose then uh the second part would be we get with smoke hour with willie nelson and that kind of kicks off the contemporary country and from uh six to uh, like 11, 11 right yeah. yeah 6 to 11 we get Texas Hold'em again another one that just hits so perfectly in uh context yeah. bodyguard we'll come back to Dolly P Jolene daughter and that is um that's the first half and then every track after that from 12 to Beyonce 27 from 12 to 27 we get what is this new country, this mixing and blending of what Beyonce is like. These are all of the elements that have ever been popular in country, in popular music, and I am blending them throughout. Time. It's so interesting that you were like, it's every three, because I, I thought of it as a, a one and a two. I thought really? like one through 11 is a clear homage to the country of the past, whereas 12 through 27 or whatever is like, hey, let's look towards the future now. Let's try something different. Let's do something new. And I, I can see what you're talking about, but when I originally heard the album, it was all just like, hey, this is my like, thank you. And here's my contribution. Actually, you know what? We said to 11, but I actually think that just but I'm, I'm basing it on kind of when she puts the interludes in mm -hmm. and she it's actually from in my opinion um we go from six all the way to uh 18 because that is the contemporary and i say that because you were like oh it's like the old and the new this is kind of like what is contemporary this is country music that is being made today this has the sounds of country music it has the stars of country music today so we get post malone we get her um her collaboration with miley cyrus which again when two most wanted came out and everyone everyone thought that that would be the follow-up to her collaboration with lady gaga and for her to put it on the poster, Beyonce is on the internet. She knows what we think. She knows our theories. And for it to be a feature with Miley Cyrus, I was like, this woman is trolling us. She knows what we expect. She knows what we're looking forward to. And every single time, she's just like, you can't predict what I'm going to do. 
You can't do it. I, I think the Miley Cyrus choice was so strategic when you think about how Miley Cyrus has been able to have a, you know, a best of both worlds and country yeah. and then pop. Yeah. Um, the same with Post Malone. Like she's clearly collaborating with people who are like proof that like, hey, genre doesn't have to be one thing. And I, I think right. the greatest proof of that is the opening to Spaghetti, where you have uh, Linda Martell, who is like, you know, genre is a funny thing. It could be confining, you know, it, you want to break out of it. Like, to me, that was like the introduction to like, hey, we're going to we're going to change up the genres a little bit. And I feel like the, the rest of the album is just her really just being so um, adventurous and just exploring what she can do with these sounds. Absolutely. OK, um, let's talk about the album a little bit more and then we'll get into our top phase. OK, OK. Um, the album in totality, I will say, again, having all of these Beyonce was so strategic with the um, people that she chose to collaborate, the imagery, the kind of story she wanted to tell with this album. Someone had said it's like one long uh, road trip of an album yeah. where you start one place in America, you just drive on through and it changes just like America itself changes as you continue to drive. So does the music. Yeah. And I completely just... I totally felt that. Also, having legends like Willie Nelson on your album, just to do a little feature, just come in, say a little something. Yeah. And Dolly Parton. Again, it's it's amazing. It's, you know, I it, it, I thought about this. Um, Actually, Kanye was the one who had me think about this because I remember when Kanye came out with uh, Dark Twist of Fantasy and he had all yeah. of these features and then you listen to it and you're like, that person was literally on that song to sing like three seconds of it. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, oh, that's such an interesting way of using human vo voices, whether speaking or singing as instruments and being like, oh, I just want like a little bit of harp here. I just want a little bit of Paul McCartney here. Like, I just want a little bit of this. And so like when you listen and like you find out that like, you know, Stevie Wonder is playing harmonica and Jolene, you're like, motherfucker, uh, like are you, uh, okay, all right. I, uh, yeah, add that in, add that sound that is so uniquely Stevie into something that even though you're not highlighting him, like you're just adding that instrument of Stevie into the song to kind of add a, you know, more a robust experience. I, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. And uh, we should all, I mean, like, we would all be so lucky as to have a Stevie Wonder feature, <laughs> let alone to have a Stevie, we are all blessed to have a Stevie Wonder, Beyonce, Knowles, and Dolly Parton collaboration all <laughs> on one song. It's crazy. It's incredible. It's crazy. Okay, let's talk about it. What are your faves? I, I, I have no idea. There were 27 tracks on this song, uh, yeah. on this album. Like, and that's you know insanity. What? It, because because of what happened with Renaissance, I know that the faves I say now are going to be different in a year than yeah. what they are right now. Yeah. But just based off of the few times I've listened to it, I'm just going to, I'll, I'll, we'll do one for one. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like, is that, uh, are you doing like best to worst or are you just listen out five? This is just, this is in no particular order. I don't have a best to worst yet. I agree with you mostly because as you said, I'll listen to certain songs and I'll be like, my God, this is hitting today. And then the next yeah. day I'll have a new favorite. So let's go. All right, um, right off the bat, Protector. It won me over the moment I heard it. I think, you know, it's such a sweet heartfelt um dedication to her daughters and um you know for what it means uh to be a mother like i just i think it's such a beautiful song and it just was like the first the, usually when i listen to an album traditionally they'll put the dance songs first like they'll kind of start with the high beat ones and kind of go to the more slow ones as the album goes on and her album kind of starts with more ballads it starts with american requiem and blackbird and 16 car uh, carriages so we're like all starting with these ballads but like all of them are powerful but there was something about protector maybe it was having rumi on there i don't know but you know um the uh, what was the lyric like? You're the projector, and for me, the shine. I I don't know the, all the lyrics yet. Forgive I'll me, your, Beehive. <laughs> uh, um, I know you're gonna shine. I'll be your projector. Yeah, I just just um beautiful lyrics and just a simple, well made song. So that's that's one of my top fives. Okay, my top 
is I, at the very first second I heard this song, I knew what Beyonce was going for, the motif. I had it in my head. And I have I have been listening to this song on repeat, and that is Alligator Tears. Ooh. I am such a fan of Alligator Tears so much because Alligator <laughs> Tears, first of all, it has that little twang. Mm -hmm. uh, like that old old western twang and i can see like the cowboy on the horse i've been saying that this is both a love song and a threat like, mm. this song is beyonce saying like i have given you everything i'm willing to give you everything and you still seek attention from other places well you have my attention now <laughs> and you're not going anywhere and i've said this before but uh, Alligator Tears kind of, if it doesn't sample, it definitely reflects uh, the opening of The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. uh, if you listen to the guitars, they're very, very similar. And that to me, I was like, The Chain from uh, Fleetwood Mac is a song about preparing for a divorce. It's like, hey, if you can't get it together, we're going to have to go our separate ways. Yeah. Alligator Tears, Beyonce saying, you're going nowhere i'm sorry darling we that chain is for life you go where i go and i i love this song i love this sound i just the lyrics think about leaving hell no like again it, it works both ways i literally listened to this song and i was like jay-z blink twice if you're okay because <laughs> beyonce well, said, okay can i nowhere. can i ask you something completely separate yeah there are a few songs on here like alligator tears and jolene where i'm just like clearly she has this like stay away from my man like voice that she's putting out there but like jay-z like you really ride or die that right. hard for jay-z b like so a i few, feel like that's gonna get things. her in trouble well no 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 first and foremost first and foremost uh i think we should know Beyonce have to has told us since 2003, Jay-Z is her man. Jay-Z is who she wants to be with. And Jay-Z is who she will be with. You mean when they met when she was 17? Yeah, exactly. No, but here's the thing. I mean, I think, like, we're not going to go really deep into it. But in my mind, you had, like, a groomer situation. And then the tables got turned. Because Beyonce was like, no, 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 no. I saw what you was trying to do. But this is mine now. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't let go. I don't lose at this. I'm I'm in it to win it. And like I just want to put that out there. I, you know what? I don't disagree. I guess there's just there is a part of me, and we'll we'll get back to that one. I'm so sorry to just sidetrack out of this for a second, but there's just so much of Beyonce's uh, you know, uh songwriting history where it's like to the left, to the left, ladies leave your man at home, where I'm just like I I really thought she would have left this nigga by now. Like I nope. really I she nope. is really so ride or die for him in a way I yes. do not understand even a little bit. But like good for her. Like whatever she's she seems happy with it. Fine. Well, the uh, hmm. a few things. One, someone has said this album is actually an album inspired by her mother and what her mother had to go through. Mm. So if Renaissance was for Uncle Johnny, um. Cowboy Carter is for Tina Knowles. For Tina. Um, and that's, I mean, like, it even the alternative, like, the limited edition albums have Beyonce, which is uh, Tina Knowles' maiden name, or at least her family name, because her maiden name was Beyonce because they misspelled it. There's a whole background to it. Uh, if you haven't checked that story out, please go look it up because it's amazing. But to that, I see that Beyonce is telling stories of generations. It's not just her story. It is a story that her family has mm. time and time again. So this idea of my man is mine, go get your own, totally, like, I get it. And then also, I just want to say, people always are like, Jay-Z, really? I think we forget that people are pick me's and pick me's will go after what they can. You ain't got to be Denzel. You ain't got to be... Jeff Bezos, you ain't got to have the most money. You ain't got to have the best looks. You just got to be somebody else's. And a lot of people get off on having access to something that belongs to someone else. Especially if you can say he's married to Beyonce and I got his attention. A lot of people wear that with a badge of pride. Mm. And Beyonce is just saying, is it worth it? <laughs> because when you get to daughter, she is like, you can try me and you may end up in a body bag. <laughs> very very true okay all right so i just to get back to our top five for a second um okay. 
My number two, maybe my favorite track of the album. I don't know. We'll see. I've been listening to Spaghetti nonstop. I love really? Spaghetti. I love how it just plays with genres. I love the country, country, petty, petty, petty of it all. It just, it seemed like such a new sound when I was listening to it. I was like, this is something that's new. This is something I'm not hearing a lot of. This feels like true fusion of genres. So that's why it was a, a standout favorite for me one of the things that i do love about that song spaghetti is a lot of people were like you know what is spaghetti like why should you use spaghetti spaghetti westerns were westerns that were made in italy that were not considered real westerns however they became the dominant art form because when people think of westerns they are usually thinking of spaghetti westerns which were more grimy they had more violence they had more moral dilemmas it's, it's like a tarantino you... western for those new new to film yes <laughs> absolutely which I, I love that you said that because to me if you are a Tarantino fan, you should be riding for Cowboy Carter. Yeah. Because what Tarantino did for movies and for movie history, that is what Beyonce is doing for music. Well, um, I will say that one of the things I found out, which, you know, forgive me for all the people, the... I know there are beehivers listening that are like, you guys are a week behind on all of this, but like, we're, we're, we're unpacking this. Um... Beyonce like got all this inspiration from watching Western films. Like that was a majority of it. She was crafting songs based off of these old Westerns like Urban Cowboy and Hateful Eight and like The Harder They Fall. And she would kind of use that as inspiration for each and every song. So I think that, yeah, pointing out the spaghetti westerns of it all um as soon as i heard it i thought of spaghetti westerns even though you know there's kind of you know lines within the song to talk about uh all the same to me plain jane spaghetti things like that like there's different yeah. ways to, to think of it absolutely okay my number two is yaya 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 is the moment i heard yaya my mind exploded First of all, we open up with the Nancy Sinatra, these boots are made for walking mm -hmm. example. The moment she did that, I like my mind, my mind literally, I couldn't, I couldn't think. <laughs> then you bitch, what are you doing? I love Nancy Sinatra. Yeah. I love this whole feel, this whole sound. And then like the entire song is, for me, it was like, it's like time traveling because you get so many different samples, so many different lyrics, so many different sounds, and you're just moving back and forth through all of them. And it's just such a fun and joyous experience. I said, this is revival music. Mm. This You need a tambourine. You need to be in a tent somewhere in the heat, just listening to Bible Belt preachers. And this is the music that they would play. This is like the shouted out music. I love it. We get the Beach Boys that again, when we just move into the Beach Boys sample, I was like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> it's and Go ahead. I was just going to say, one of the things I love about that song, too, is like we were talking the Americana of it all. The lyrics are so yes. hard on just like, you know, a whole lot of red what, uh, red and that white and blue, huh? History can't be erased. Like, she is spitting some shit right now. Correct. Absolutely. This is, well, it's very much like the songs of that time, like we were talking about. Um, the James Browns, the Tina Turners, <laughs> the the Beatles, Ray Charles, Little Ray Richards, Charles, yeah. Little Richards, but also the Beatles, the Beach Boys. What I'm saying, these, well, not the Beach Boys, but these were political artists. These were mm. artists whose music, A, by its existence, was political, but they usually had a message. They had something that they wanted to say. It was like, go out, vote, be active, be present in your community, notice what's going on. Yeah. All of those things were really important at that time. And okay, so I'm gonna give a little background on some of these things because I just like, I loved this. First and foremost is, as I said, the song opens up with Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made For Walking. Now, yeah. the layers to this sample. First of all, we have the fact that These Boots Are Made For Walking is inspired by a line, the song itself was inspired by a line said by Frank Sinatra in the movie Four for Texas. So Four for Texas has a line where Frank Sinatra says, they tell me them boots ain't built for walking. 
Nancy Sinatra reimagines um, that line as these boots are made for walking, and she makes a feminist pop song that says, I do what I want. You don't tell me what I can and cannot do. So for Beyonce to take that sample and kind of use it as the introduction to this part of the album, saying the exact same things, you can't tell me what I can and cannot do. I do what I want and all for it to be from Texas, for from Texas. I was just like, this woman, it, and she, this is right before she says the line, because I'm a clever girl. And I was like, you're <laughs> so clever. You're so ingenious. It's ridiculous. <laughs> It's a, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great song. And honestly, to me, it's one of those that like, I'm really excited to see the, um, you know, uh, Texas Hold'em got a lot of TikTok dances and things like that. I think Yaya is going to actually produce a lot of fun TikTok dances as well. Can you imagine seeing this live? If you're you going to tell me that Beyonce is not going to come out and have someone throw a cloak on her and just like <laughs> do that little, you know, the James round of it all, the, the performance. The whole thing. I, I'm excited for that. I'm also excited to just like see like line dancing in the WeHo. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. I, <laughs> oh, it's, it's happening. Uh, last little bits that I need to say about Yaya and then I promise I'll let you go on. Um, as I said, this, this song is about like just pop music throughout time. And there's a line where she goes, we shaking. Uh, we shaking, we swimming, we jerking, we twerking. And I was like, we shaking. It's not only just like the shake that you would do, but it starts with Elvis Presley's The Hip Shake. That yeah. was controversial at the time. Then we get uh, We Swimming, which everyone knows that 60s dance. But We Jerking, again, a, a dance move that was done in the 60s that also we have a different the jerk in 2000s but then you also have we twerking which is uh, a very popular dance move right now and hip hop so again it's it the lines that she's saying is literally transcending time and genres but then finally you have the back half of it where she starts to sing. And for those of you who don't know, because I was this way, I was like, oh, she sounds like Elvis Presley. And <clears throat> no, 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 no. Elvis Presley notoriously stole his sound from a guy named Roy Hamilton. If you go and you look up Roy Hamilton music and you listen to it, I played it for my husband. He was like, you're telling me this is not Elvis. I was like, no, this is not Elvis. So again, Beyonce is reclaiming all of this music and giving people their flowers and their credit that they never got before. And she said, you will learn today. I love this song. I um, also love that, like, in the part of, there's a part of Yaya where she goes from Texas to Gary. Um, yeah. Gary, Indiana, birthplace of Michael Jackson. So yep. it's, like, really just showing, like, hey, we're black people were taking over music from the South all the way up to the North and just the, you know, the full history of all of that. Just so many, so many uh, nuggets that uh, kind of the more I listen to it, the more I pick up on. Also, she men mentioned the Chitlin circuit, which is how yes. uh, black people would kind of perform and do concerts at a time where Jim Crow laws were around. So they kind of had to perform separately. And that's where like rock and roll and blues and a lot of our modern music kind of gets its roots from as well. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what is your next pick? Uh, my next pick is Sweet Honey Buckin. Um, yes! Buckin. Buckin. Uh, it's just such a, it, honestly, uh, it's such a just <laughs> jam. Like, it's just such like a dope song. I love how the song kind of changes tempos as it goes on. Um, it just, it has so many... Um, kind of rises and falls to it. It was produced by Pharrell, so it kind of has a little bit more modern sound on it. Shabuzi, which is a um, African country singer, funny enough. Yep. Um, this is his second appearance on the album, kind of, you know, adding a little bit of, um, he says, you want smoke, I'm the marble man. This ain't Calabasas, we don't need highways, like shit like that. Like really like, you know, take, taking, um, you know, you listen to country music nowadays and they're always talking about boots and trucks and, you know, all of these kind of things that are synonymous with being a cowboy, but, you know, they're kind of reclaiming that in a really fun way. And uh, what's it, what's it say? Uh, in the bag, only thing getting lassoed, things like that. So like really kind of having fun with those country references. Absolutely. Um, Sweet Highly Bucket is an amazing song because it, very much like it is set up, uh, it has three parts to it. Sweet, 
honey and bucking and the sweet part we open up with uh beyonce's kind of cover of patsy's klein i fall to pieces a notorious uh country song and when you hear it at first it's so sweet and you're so sweet but it it is it's so sweet and it's such a great and you're like oh we're you feel like we're about to wrap up and it feels very much like an homage to what has come before Mm -hmm. and then we get honey and it's it changes into this modern song where like you said we get shibuzi and it's so much fun uh but then we get bucking and man, when Buckin, when the beat drops on Buckin, mm-hmm. it's ass out. I mean, it's it is. <laughs> and it goes from being so sweet to just so like uh raunchy. Raunchy, yeah. Like I I I I it just it feels so uh like sweet and sexy, I guess. Yes. You know. It's so, so much fun. Um, what is your like oh I didn't do my number three. If I'm going to be honest, Sweet Honey Bucket would have been there. But because you chose it, that gives me room for one more. Okay. Uh, I'm going to mention my uh, third, the one I've been playing the most, which is Levi's Jeans. Oh. Levi's Jeans. Okay. Again, if you don't listen to country music, I don't know if you get it. But as someone who grew up listening to country music, the moment Levi G's came on, I was like, I know this song. I know when they would play this song. I know how everyone moves on the dance floor when they play this song. Yeah. And if this song isn't at every hunky tonk across the country, I don't I, like you can't tell me it's not because of racism. Because this song was made to be played with couples dancing on the dance floor at a bar and it's such a like post malone's voice on this it's the best he's ever sounded i I, like i completely agree with you and i never i never would have paired them two but it works so well he's another artist who kind of got his start covering black music using like you know the black cosign and he was able to transition into country and people praised him for it. So this idea of Beyonce being like, if you're going to allow him and Miley to move across genres and not have a problem with it, I dare you to say something. I when dare I you to say it, something. That's, that's this whole album. I dare you to say something. <laughs> Absolutely. And Levi's Jeans is not only is it a good song, it's a very sweet song. And it just, it's so, it's so good. It is probably will be one of my top played songs of the year. I can tell because it is so good. The lyrics are so sweet. And again, I, I, every time I play it, I'm at a country bar with a beer and just having a really good time. The song reminded me so much. Like when I first heard it, it gave me Cheryl Crow Kid Rock mm. picture. Do you remember mm-hmm. that one? Yes, like, of just, course. Just, just like classic, just like um, a country ballad duets. Like, yes. you know, I feel like ballads and specifically like duet ballads have like been able to last and the genre of country in ways that we don't really see a lot of. I, I feel like I don't really see a lot of like really like sweet ballads in R&B as much anymore or in some of these other genres. So it was just, it's interesting that she's kind of being able to get back to like some of these things that were so core to mainstream music. Like I just, when you even think about us growing up and like, you know, Celine Dion and like all these yeah. power ballads of the time, you know, I feel like again, country has made, a, made space for them in the way that other genres haven't really. Absolutely. And then also, I will say that um, another thing about Levi Jeans is it has that Renaissance reference, mm. which again, it's like that if we had the uh, Lemonade reference in Jolene to get this Renaissance message uh, in Levi's Jeans, it is kind of, again, like an album that lives in between time, both the before and the after, and I love it for it. Also, Levi Jeans, American denim, classic sure. Americana, as you were saying, um, this kind of sturdy longevity that we all associate with the American blue jean. Um, I, I, I just, I can't say enough about this song. It's great. Yeah. All right. What is well, your fourth? To to that point, you know, 
the almost your same feelings you have about that i had about um two most wanted and so like even though it's the obvious choice i honestly i really enjoyed the song i like post malone i thought this was maybe the best vocal performance i've heard from miley cyrus in some time i was really impressed with the way their voices were able to go together um i also think that this is kind of the most romantic song on the album um like i think this is like uh like to me that was like oh this is a, like a lesbian wedding song like i can't yes. wait to go and just like see like at like a uh honky tonk bar like feeling like that you know two women have a song about love for each other that they can use in this way so um yeah. that, that was kind of my first impressions of it no i completely agree um my husband is such a big miley cyrus fan i mean he is a huge miley cyrus fan so when i i heard i made him listen to practically every other song on the album before I let him listen to this. Because I was like, <laughs> you won't want to listen to anything else. <laughs> yeah. And like sure enough, he listened to it and he like just started crying. And those of you who um aren't familiar, Miley's voice and Beyonce's voice are usually like not paired together in a lot of like modern music, but they work so well. And they like, I think someone pointed out and uh, I, I could be wrong. I'm going to check it really quickly, but Beyonce allows Miley to take the higher octave on this. And she even allows Miley to kind of start the song in a way that Beyonce doesn't usually do with her features. So it's Just very, Beyonce ain't very, got nothing to prove. She'll go, yeah. <laughs> we all know she's a better singer than Miley Cyrus, but she like allows Miley to shine and enhances her vocal performance by kind of, like you said, doing the harmonies and kind of doing some more background vocals and allowing Miley to take the lead more. Um, I, 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 she's she's come a long way from Dream Girls. Yes, she really <laughs> has. Oh. <laughs> uh, this this two most wanted. Uh, I think it's already charting and it's already slated to be. I, I find it funny because I feel like the songs from this album are fighting to be on the charts oh, because 100%. everyone loves their own version and everyone has their own faves that there are the songs that Beyonce and her team want to be singles. And there's the songs that we're like, I, I understand and I see you, but we got it from here. <laughs> to be honest, I, that's my favorite part about streaming culture. Like there's so much negative that comes from streaming in the music industry. But what I love is this idea that, you know, prior to Spotify and all these things, the record company would decide, hey, these are going to be your three singles before the album even comes out. Whereas now it's like, hey, what song is getting the most streams right now? Because I could physically see which songs are probably going to be the next singles based off of their performance on Spotify. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but two most wanted, man. That is a it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah. Uh, okay. My next pick. This is really hard. I'm not gonna lie, but I think I'm gonna go with two hands to heaven. Oh, beautiful. Just based on what we were talking about, this kind of run that you and I just went back with. Um, the uh Levi's jeans, the two most wanted, and now two hands to heaven, a beautiful song that is both heartbreaking and passionate and it feels like a road trip it feels like the wind you can kind of feel time passing mm -hmm. by and you can feel the the heartache and the love and the kind of togetherness and foreverness of the song with two hands to heaven um, uh, and it itself also has like a second half that is just like, like we're running. It's yeah. Go. It's beautiful. And I just like, I wanted to praise that song so much. It has so many things, um, that I connected with in terms of the lyrics. Um, the, one of the lines that I really wanted to pull out was, uh, in these dark times, I'm so glad that this love is blinding. Because all I see is the best of you and all you see is the best of me. Mm. And I was like, yes, there are, they've been through hardship, but that doesn't matter. They are here, they're in it. And again, Two Hands to Heaven, such a beautiful, beautiful song. 
You know, the the front half, the part one of that song to me, like, you know, she obviously had all of these acclaimed, you know, uh, collaborations on the album. This felt the most like a Willie Nelson song to me. It felt the most mm. like a very like simple country song that may have, you know, came out in the 60s or the 70s, at least, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, from the lyrics of it all, you know, bottle in my hand with my whiskey up high, two hands to heaven, coyotes running wild. Like it just, it, it's something very simple, but very folky as well, which I really appreciated. You know, she said in an interview that, like, you know, she wanted to really um, tap into, like, raw, organic folk sounds to kind of counter the AI and digital filter stuff that's happening. Um, and, you know, she was like, you know, I left in a lot of imperfections. I, I left in sounds with animals. I left in, like, just, you know, uh, I didn't tweak and, you know, do a lot of stuff to it because I wanted it to feel flawed and wanted it to feel human. And I feel like this song is a great example of that. Yeah, uh, some things, uh, a little bit more things about this song. One is we get the lines, uh, this is the real you, this is the real me. I can't do anything but envy, bliss, please. First of all, the way that she says bliss, please, for me, double meaning, this mm -hmm. idea of requesting bliss and happiness and mm -hmm. just like we've been through so much, I just want to be happy, but also bliss, please. Like that's not happening. That's, that's, not, happening. that's yeah. not how life is. Bliss is not a true and long-term option. So mm. I love that. But also that part of the song, when we get into it, feels the most lemonade. It feels yep. the most like reminiscent of what we went through and the journey we went through with her in Lemonade. And then uh, I, I will admit, I'm not the, um, I'm not a, musicologist i don't know that much about the art of making music or voices but someone pointed out beyonce's ability to do these runs and then just stop yeah and then go back into it is a craft in and of itself no i mean vocally she is doing things that are so advanced things that are seemingly i mean uh, we'll get to like the the daughter of it all but like she is doing acrobats vocally that oh sorry vocally that i think are things that we're not really seeing because there's been such a dependency on um auto-tune and just like this kind of fast production of songs that people aren't really taking the time to do all of the work that she's doing because it's not even just the vocals that she's presenting in the leads it's the vocals that are happening in the harmonies as well that are really impressive okay what is your final pick for the top five you know i will say this after listening to the album, I do think Texas Hold'em is still up there for me. But for the case of just speaking on something different, I'm going to put Riverdance. Riverdance, to me, felt so um, Florida. <laughs> I don't yeah, think... <laughs> you know what? I've never, I have not heard anyone say that, but you're right. It's Florida. And bounce on that shit there. Yeah. Bounce on that bounce shit there. You'd be like, ah! <laughs> there's something no, like she's hey. really chal like i mean maybe it's a, a better term for it would probably be like the more louisiana of it all but yeah. like this kind of like um fusion of country and dirty south uh hip-hop in a way that i think blends together so well we saw so much of that with like nelly in the early yeah. 2000s and i feel like this is kind of like beyonce's version of that um i'm already seeing dance moves to this song all over the internet like to me this one is just the one that i think uh m probably will get some airplay maybe maybe we'll see a video for it. i'm hoping we see videos for all i want a lemonade of this oh, i want a God. visual album like please i know you've been working your ass off beyonce give us some more because I really want to see how she envisioned some of these songs because I have I can't I, I can't listen to a single song on this album without envisioning like my own version of music videos from her absolutely uh someone had said and I I will look if you look at the early promotionals uh, like like the little clips that she did of the visuals for renaissance or at least what we thought was renaissance they a lot of them line up really well with uh cowboy carter so a mm. lot of people are like are were these originally visuals for cowboy carter that she put on pause so she could do renaissance i don't know i don't know what it was ever supposed to be but i do know that beyonce is a very very smart trickster 
She well, loves to play with us. She loves to play to with us. To that point, I mean, it's kind of hard to ignore that, like, the first renaissance was a cowboy hat and a horse. Like, yeah. the cowboy hat and the horse is consistent between the two albums. So I'm interested to see with the third version, like, how she's going to incorporate some of that same in- imagery. People have already said that if you look closely, we're getting a lot of rock imagery. She's starting to pull out, like, and the thing about Beyonce that is so crazy is she does like to, like, give us little bread crumbs along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun because there are things, she'll use like a scrunchie and we'll be like, does that mean something? I don't know. (laughs) And and here's the thing, it could. like She's the Jordan Peele of musicians. Yes, it is so, it's so amazing. uh, And I love her promotion. All right, for my final song, I I really, I had to go back and forth. I was like thinking which one, we've covered so many great ones already. I think my final choice, specifically because what you brought up early with uh, Riverdance and the Nelly of it, Tyrant. Tyrant oh, yeah, yeah. has that old, dirty South feel to me. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, again, an equally sexy, fun song that you just like want to ride it out to. I, I, I heard this song and I was like, oh, we are getting down. She will have yeah. people disgusted on the dance floor uh and i'm here for it i can't wait to be around other people hearing this music because the way we don't know how to act as is you put on a beyonce song as is people go crazy you put on this music you have no choice but to dance it's you know um the thing that i think is most important about this album i feel like is what it's going to do for the next decade of music for what it's going to do to kids who are in high school who are starting you know bands are writing stuff and they're like oh i can do that now i didn't realize i could do that and like i wonder what country music is even going to sound like in five years because of an album like this because you know we've already seen hip-hop you know find its way into country through so many white artists, but to now have an artist of Beyonce's caliber doing this and making like like a, a master class at it as well. Um, I'm just really interested to see what the impact is going to be. I mean, I think Tyrant is such a great example of, you know, the fusion of it all, the energy, um, you know, and again, still staying true to a lot of these country, these things that we feel like are very country. You know, I just don't sit up and saddle boy. Like, it, 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 there's so many things in there that just kind of give reference to it while also kind of, again, looking ahead. So um, I think this is one of the songs where I was just like, yeah, she's doing something different. She's doing something new. She is. And I like, it also starts off with Dolly Parton. And I think someone's like, you can hear it very clearly in this song. Um, there's a very very famous viral video of Dolly Parton playing her nails like mm. like what would be like the sound of like the washboard is Dolly Parton and I believe it's Patti LaBelle are just playing with their acrylic nails uh and that's where the background noise is coming from and so Beyonce did the exact same thing on this album and again it's just like this woman did her research it's so much fun it's so good i love a deep dive and um i I know we didn't get to everything like you said we didn't mention bodyguard which i know people have been like they're like bodyguard hive is strong for julius Uh, (laughs) yeah uh, julius the julius of it all that's a whole other conversation uh i'm not gonna lie american requiem yeah. If I had to, like that would have been my sixth pick because I, I really do feel like it deserves its flowers. Uh yeah, my sixth man was uh daughter because of the uh, the opera of it all. And I thought uh. of just Beyonce performing opera in the Grand Old Opry, like just the the fact that she's just able to incorporate that on the same album that she's rapping on. I'm just like, what can't she do? What can't, what she, can't do? she do? And also, I hate to do it, but like Taylor, you better be sweating bullets somewhere, <laughs> Taylor Swift, because no one wants to hear your silly little poem album after this shit. Like, I don't know how Beyonce will get denied album of the year again, but to be honest, it doesn't matter anymore because she is just making art that is affecting a culture more than it's about accolades of any kind. I want everyone to know that that was Tony Curtis, not Siege. So when y'all oh, I come stand by for him, him. <laughs> I, stand by that. I still stand by that. I, when no, y'all whatever. come for him, go in one direction. Come at me. Uh, 
uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation as much as we did. Um, let us know your favorites. We are really excited. Um, again, I can't wait to see what Act 3 is going to be. Because if this is what Act 2 is, if this is what we got for 2, and someone was like, this is the same woman who two years ago gave us Renaissance. Like, it's she crazy. gave us Renaissance, and then she gave us a Renaissance tour, and then she dropped this. And I'm assuming there's going to be another tour. I can't wait to see the outfits of the other tour. I can't wait to see how we as Black people show up and show out for these tours. Like, y'all going to be so sick of us. Yes, you're <laughs> going to be sick of us. And rightly so, because we will be like we will not stop. I've been playing this album. I have started being that guy where yeah. I roll down my windows and I play this album so people know that I'm playing this album. And you should too. Like we should live in a world like that's one of the things that I we haven't really talked about it uh, a lot, but like the freak Nick uh documentary they talked about how like people were playing music in their cars and like you know that's how you discovered what the latest thing was and i was like we really have lost something by hearing not necessarily what other people are saying they're listening to but actually what songs are at people actively listening to what songs have people bumping in their cars yeah like that's what I, so I'm doing my part. I'm raising down my windows. Can, I'm playing Cowboy Carter. <laughs> can I say one last thing about Cowboy Carter as an album? Um, you know, we talked about this, I think, a few weeks ago about how this whole album was kind of a reaction to Beyonce, how she was treated at the CMA Awards when she performed yes. the Dixie Chicks. And I just think it's so interesting that there wasn't a single, I think it's so interesting that there wasn't a single person who was in attendance that day who made it on the album. Like she's not collaborating with Tim McGraw. She's not collaborating with Carrie Underwood. She's like, no, I'm going to your dad's favorite artist. I'm going to the grandfather, like a Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, like the undisputed champions of this genre that like, there's not a single thing that you could say because I got their, their cosign. Like, I just think it's so brilliant. And like the, if you thought Cunty Country Petty, Petty wasn't like the way she made a whole album out of that, the way she said, y'all rolled your eyes at me and now I'm coming after all of this. Like, I just think this needs to be studied for years to come. Oh, a hundred percent. Like that's kind of one of the things, it's one of the reasons why I love American Requiem so much. It's because Beyonce says, um, can you stand me? Can you stand? I think people forget that there was a whole part of that audience who refused to stand for Beyonce while she's saying daddy lessons. And she was like, y'all don't know how much I've been through to sing my song. And again, it's like, she's talking about singing the daddy lesson songs. People don't understand the hurt and the pain that she went through. And the idea that she went to sing that song to share her story and her art with these people and to kind of be like, hey, I think that what you're doing is important. I think that this genre has legs and to be met with racism and misogyny and just downright hate, for her to say, can you stand me now? Can you hear me now? Like you will have to listen because I'll make it so. Yeah. Like I just, I love it so much. You don't have to listen because your kids are listening now, boom. Oh, your kids, <laughs> your daddy, your mama, everybody. Like they demanded that mm -hmm. they play these songs. And a lot of people are talking about which songs are like being picked on the radio station. And like, there are DJs who are like, I don't care what you chose. I want to play my fave. Mm -hmm. uh, all that being said, someone has pointed out, these tickets will be so hard to get because now we have other people. It's a recession. Like, oh, Why are you doing this to us? Why Beyonce? <laughs> I think personally, if you are black, you should get tickets mailed directly to your household. <laughs> yeah, there should be some kind of Juneteenth pre-sale. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I just, uh, like I said, you know, this was, I've only listened to the album for a few times. I can't wait to listen to it more. I'm sure there's going to be new things that we pick up on um, that the public at large kind of picks up on as they kind of dissect it more and more. And I'm just excited to kind of uh, get those conversations going and just seeing what other people notice. Yeah, absolutely. I did want to say um, this album meant so much to me because I had posted this on my socials, but uh, I listened to it the first night, loved it. But I woke up the next morning, 
early. It was like I said, it was playing in my mind. And I woke up crying. And I woke up crying because the importance and the relevance of this album was like unlocked in my brain. You mm. and I both grew up in the South. We grew up being very one of very few Black people in our environment. We've gone to cowboys, like we've gone to country cowboys bars. in Orlando. Yes, the, the the bar. Yeah, exactly. We've done it, and I was like, I was never made to feel like I was allowed to enjoy country. Like mm-hmm. I was allowed to um celebrate these songs and like this music even though i understood it and i felt it and i thought it was um great and lyrically like so deep and uh emotional and i was always made to feel like i wasn't welcome in these spaces but then i listened to this album and it reminded me my family has been in this country for generations My father's family can go back to the 1600s in this country. We have worked the tobacco fields of Carolinas and the Virginias. We have worked the coal mines of West Virginia. Like I, we've worked the livestock. Like we were cow, like actual cowboys. Like yeah, we were actual cowboys. Like to know that my family has such history with what gets to be defined as country in this very country and then also be told that we don't get to claim any of it i love that beyonce was like no babes no Mm -hmm. (laughs) we coming for what's ours and that's what this album did for me and just the ability to see that and then be like who says i can't yeah who says that i can't do this thing who says that i can't be in this room who are you to tell me that this isn't mine because it's not yours. Yeah. And just to, you know, see an artist at that level kind of give something to all of us. You know, there's so many times where people are coming out with music and it's so self-involved or it's just the kind of like gloating about their own success. Whereas this, she's telling the story of America. She's telling the story of all of us in so many ways. So it really just feels like this was a gift more than it was um, some kind of like selfish, egotistical uh, expression. Yeah, it's so funny. I There are videos on TikTok of Italians hearing Beyonce sing opera in Italian on Daughter for the first time. And seeing those videos made me be like, oh, it is, it is like, I know what it's like to feel represented and seen by Beyonce, but I also love that she gives that feeling to so many other people. So many other people, when Beyonce, like Beyonce singing Italian, Italians lost their mind. They're like, oh my God, she noticed us. She sees us. She's validating us. And I just think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 there, honestly, I can't think of any uh, one in her category. She is just, she stands, she's in the category of her own. Here who? She's Pure who? <laughs> Uh, well, thank you guys so much for listening to this. We want to hear what you have to say. Reach out to us at Brown Meets World. Don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube. Don't forget to check out our merch. And don't forget to dream, cry, and listen to Beyonce. <laughs> hey. Later, Later bro. bros. Russ. This episode of Brown Meets World was produced by CJ and by Tony Curtis. Brown Meets World is a two free tokens media production. Later, bros. Yeehaw.